Hey there and welcome to the latest episode of the My Body Health podcast with myself, Dave Sheehan, high performance consultant and dedicated now for over 25 years to educating, motivating, and I do truly hope inspiring you to become the best you that you can be, to live the best life that you can have, because remember, it's on you to create it. You have the power to create it. You have, to, you have the power to create it every single day in every single thought you have, in decisions you make, in actions you take, in the whole overall way that you behave in your life. You have that power. That's what's so amazing about life. So it's important for you to grasp it. And on the Mind Body Health podcast, I do all I can to give you tips and strategies and inspiring stories that will help you on your own personal journey towards what I hope will be success, fulfillment, and most important of all, happiness. The Mind Body Health podcast, of course, puts a huge focus on the Mind Body and Health because for me, it is a key foundation that everything else is built on. So when you are in control of your Mind Body and Health, typically everything else automatically improves so your relationships your professional life your financial situation overall general happiness and well-being in your life so this is why it's so important to get a good mindset get a positive mental attitude get it into healthy exercise so that your body feels good you feel energetic your brain gets the mind body connection benefits you like your body shape with good self-esteem and positive uh, self-image and good confidence and you experience good health because who doesn't want good health by most people, the way they behave, you think they don't want good health because their choices are so shit in terms of the whole health perspective. But you know, we should always want to have better health because having good health, having optimal health, leaves you live a vibrant life, gives you the ability to have a life that's full of energy, brain works well, you feel good, your moods are better, you can achieve much more in your life, you prevent diseases and illnesses and ailments much better, all these kinds of things. Even if you get anything, then you can treat it better. So you are taking personal responsibility for your life. This is the power that you have. Every single second of every single day, you have the power to take personal responsibility for your life, including your health and well-being, which, as I said, is a huge part of everything and has a huge impact on everything. And it's a choice and there are no excuses. Simple as that. There are no excuses. In over 25 years working in this industry with thousands of people all over the world, I've yet to hear an excuse that I would consider any way valid for not making positive lifestyle or life choices. If you have one, send me it. I'd love to hear it because I'm still waiting for even just one. No excuses. OK, well, in this particular episode, I'm going to address exercise specifically. OK, again, on very on all these episodes, we talk about a wide range of different types of topics and we have various guests on. And I'm loving the feedback I'm getting from the guests, guest interviews I've had on so far this year. So it's been great. And there's loads more great guests coming and I'm really excited about them. On this particular episode though, I'm going to speak to you about exercise and I want to clear up some myths about exercise. Okay. Because there's so many myths out there and this is a big reason why people aren't consistent. It's a big reason why people are doing the wrong things. And it's a big reason, of course, why people are not getting the results that they desire. And then they just fleet in and out of exercise and just don't see the benefit to it in terms of consistency. So I'm going to clear that up. So at least you know the facts. And when you know the facts and you can make your own informed decisions, and again, there won't be any excuses then for you to not be consistent with your exercise and to not be getting results and to not feel the benefits. Because if you do what I tell you, you will feel the benefits. I can guarantee you that 100%. Because at the end of the day, what I'm telling you is the facts. What I'm going to destroy today are the myths. Okay? It's as simple as that. So please listen. And most importantly, implement anything that I'm telling you to, that you should do implement it now i believe that you should always you know um have a critical mind about everything you hear from anybody you hear from so while i know what i'm talking about that's me i want you to think about what i'm saying question in your own mind even do your own little bit of research on the side see what you think and if there's anything i say that you don't kind of fully agree with or you're a bit unsure about or confused about contact me message me let's chat it out i always welcome feedback on opinions and comments and questioning and whatever because that then gives me the opportunity to give a reply back that you may or may not take on board or may or may not make sense to you but at least we have that bit of dialogue so there isn't any kind of confusion there which is really important and healthy open discussion is always beneficial no matter what you're talking about and we live in a world right now where there's no discussion about anything no matter what the issues are no matter how big they are how important they are how impactful they are on millions of people there's no discussion and this is why I encourage open discussion about everything. And you know, it's important for people to do that respectfully because we all think different. We all have different experiences. We all have different lifestyles. We all have different influences. And um, yeah, 
it's all a journey. We're on a journey. So in terms of exercise, one I'm going to start now with just a little off the cuff in terms of going off memory. But again, I've done these kind of presentations before. So, you know, I know the kind of things I want to address, the important ones. And again, if there's any type of things that you would see as potentially an exercise myth that I don't include in this particular um, podcast, put as a comment below the podcast, if it's on YouTube or send me a message or whatever it might be, um, and then I'll address it, okay? One I want to really start off with that's really um, important is the myth that the fitter you get and the health, the fitter you get and the stronger you get and the more you get into exercise routine, things get easier. No, they don't get easier. It should always be hard, okay? Your workout should always be hard. Now, before you have a freak attack and switch off completely, let me just clarify something regarding this. It should always be hard if you're aiming to progress. There's different types of people. There's three different types, really. There's people who are looking for results that want to lose fat and or build lean muscle, okay? The people who are looking for athletic performance where fat and muscle aren't necessarily the concern. And you got people who are training just for their health. They just want to be healthy. They know they need to exercise. They know they should be moving a bit more. So they're doing it for that. They have no specific goal apart from they know they need to just move more to be healthy. Just like to know they should drink more water, eat healthier foods, get more sleep. So general, you know, general um, decent lifestyle without it being any way extreme or any way, you know, specific or over, you know, what they see is a lot of dedication, obsession, okay? So if you're a person who's just purely exercising for your health and that's it, it doesn't really matter what you do, okay? There's certain things you should do, which I'll touch on in a little while. But you don't have to worry about intensity. You don't have to worry about working hard. You don't have to worry about how long you're exercising for, even the frequency. Of course, the more you do, the better. Um, but especially the intensity side, you don't have to work hard. Just move, just exercise, do activities you enjoy. It can even be just recreational activities like a sport, like playing football, rugby, you know, playing tennis, um, just going to the gym, using a lot of different machines, doing exercise classes, doing Zumba, dance classes, whatever it may be. The main thing is to move, not just sit in your arse most of the time. There's a reason that we have such an obesity epidemic all over the world and also that so many people are obese and so many people are in so much pain and discomfort and disease and illness and so on is because people are moving so little these days in the modern lifestyle, which is so, so sedentary. And add to that then the incredible amount of shit that people are consuming, processed, full of chemicals, you know, not even really food most of the time. It's destroying their bodies. And there's many other things like the amount of shit that's in your water too that you're consuming. That's a whole different story. And I've touched on that in another uh, podcast too. So get rid of this myth that exercise should feel better, should feel easier. No, 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 no. Now, the only thing that will is on relative terms. Let's say if I go in today and I'm on my first day and I do a workout and I do a bench press of 20 kilos, for ex example, and I barely get six reps and it nearly kills me. Okay. Now, in a few weeks time, if I go back to doing the 20 kilos, I should be able to do six reps easy, probably even 10, 12, 15, even 20 reps, and it still will be easy. Now, that, in terms of relative comparison, yes, it will feel easier. But if you're on a journey where you're trying to go from A to B, you're trying to improve your body shape, trying to lose fat or gain muscle or improve tone or increase the muscle mass or improve your athletic performance, you need to always work hard. You need to always work hard. Because if you don't, the body has no reason to change. So intensity is absolutely crucial. So you need to work hard. Now, it does not be very long, it'll be short. But we'll touch on that shortly as another myth. Um, but you need to work out intensively. And intensity is what is one of the most important principles that achieve results. Without intensity, you won't achieve results. Okay? You need intensity. Now, remember as well, intensity is relative to everybody. Everyone's different in terms of what intensity is. Okay? We all have our own intensity. Because sometimes I might say to somebody even, hey, go do some sprints. And I might go, I can't sprint. Of course you can sprint. Everyone can sprint. But see, they're comparing to me. They go, Jesus, you run, so I can't keep up with you, so I can't run. No, you run at your pace. Just like you lift weights at your pace, you run at your own pace, you cycle at your own pace, you do the roar at your own pace, you hit the punch bag at your own pace, you do the cross trainer or step at your own pace, everything at your own pace, all relative to what you can do. And also relative to certain days, because you could have a day where you're absolutely exhausted from poor sleep or you're exhausted and mentally drained from work and not a demand, sir. You could have stuff going on in your personal life and at home. So you're just not fully on it. You don't have that oomph. So you're giving your best that day could be 50% less in terms of figures, in terms of weights and reps or speeds and things like that than a previous day. But one, the fact you're actually doing it's a huge, huge achievement because it's the days you don't feel like exercising or the ones that actually count the most. And also 
you know, it's all relative. If you can only do 50% of your normal speeds or weights in that particular day, cool. That's all you can do in that particular day. You'll have another day where you feel absolutely amazing. You feel like bloody Superman and you have massive increases in what you did on the time before. So you'll have both sides. What matters is that you give it your best, okay? With no workout should feel easy unless you choose for it to be easy in terms of it's for your health or you're just feeling a bit ill or off or lack of energy or just a mind isn't in it and you're just going through the motions and ticking the box. And that's all you're trying to do. But unless, if it's none of those situations, you need to work hard. So there shouldn't be a case of easy workouts. Because a lot of time people say to me, oh, you know, can't wait for this to feel easy. And they're going to be waiting because it should never feel easy. It'll always be hard. It should always be hard. It needs to always be hard. And also there's a buzz in that too. You feel a sense of accomplishment and achievement when you keep progressing all the time. Okay. So that's the first one I wanted to tackle. Don't expect your workouts to become easy. Don't expect exercise to become easy. You'll be waiting and waiting and waiting. It does not happen. Unless, like I said, you choose for it to be easy, but uh, the results of that will be you won't get results. It'll just be good for your health. Does that make sense? Okay. That's the first one I want to tackle. Um, let's see. Next one I want to tackle. So let's tackle the one that's always bandied about is the whole weight training. And weight training is only for guys. And weight training will make women massive and like men and so on. Absolute garbage. A kid, one, you have to train correctly to even get the results in the first place and to gain muscle. So that takes specific types of workouts to gain muscle, okay? You need to have the right kind of genetics to gain muscle. Like me, I'm a certain body type that I have to absolutely annihilate myself with quite low reps, very heavy weights, again, relatively now, heavy reps or heavy weight relatively, to gain any kind of muscle. And not even just that, that's the stimulation. My nutrition needs to be absolutely perfect. My sleep needs to be absolutely perfect. My mind needs to be per perfect to push myself hard enough in the workout to stimulate the muscle growth. Now, that's a guy trying to build muscle, right? And I have testosterone. And I should have a lot of testosterone because, again, I lead a healthy life, okay? They're the ingredients I need to build muscle. A woman does not have those ingredients. Women have a small amount of testosterone, may mainly estrogen, okay? So even just from a, like a hormone point of view, it's not possible to gain huge muscles. So women shouldn't be afraid of gaining big muscles, okay? Third thing, like I said, you have to be on a specific kind of program. If you're being put on a, like a bodybuilding program, a hypertrophy program, which is the word for muscle building, and you're not wanting that, then your trainer's absolutely fucking stupid putting you on the wrong program. Now that happens quite a bit because a lot of trainers will just give everyone the same damn program, no matter what the goal actually is. But let's just pick you're getting the right program, you have the right choice of program, just like for research online for program. So if you choose a program that's not for muscle building, you're not stimulating the muscles to grow to big size, and then you don't have the testosterone to build the muscle. So how the hell can you build big mad muscles? So ladies, do not be afraid of building big huge muscles. You could be doing a hundred kilo dumbbell curls for your bicep, like curling up now like this. You will not get gigantic arms. It doesn't matter what the weight is, even because remember, remember the weight is all relative to your own ability. What it's all about is like a stimulation and then how the body is fed then internally afterwards and then your hormone levels and your genetics and so on. So so many different ingredients there. You will not build big, huge, mad muscles. That's for females. As I said, even for guys, it's hard to build muscles. There's a lot of guys who will never get gigantic, even if they really want it. They just do not have the gen genetics. You do not have the level of testosterone that's required. They can be in amazing shape. They can look incredibly athletic. They can have good level of muscle. But they actually want to be big, like huge bodybuilders. There's only a small percentage of people even have the genetics to do that. And then the level of dedication it takes is unbelievable. You now, let's pull aside the whole drug situation. But just the dedication to the food and exercise and sleep and all that is phenomenal. So there's so many ingredients to go into. So if you're afraid of building big man muscle, I want you to wipe out that fear because that fear is needless. You have no reason to feel that fear because it's not going to happen. Okay. It is not going to happen. So that's that one. So in terms of women or guys, some guys are afraid they don't want to get big muscle. They want to look like bodybuilders. And again, same with a lot of women. Now, when I throw in there for women, weight training is an absolute necessity. You need to weight train. Now, weight training does not have to be in a gym lifting loads of heavy dumbbells or using machines. It can be just your body weight at home with kettlebells or bottles of water or whatever. It doesn't matter. Remember, it's all relative. But you need to do weight training because it's the best thing ever for your bone density. OK, so as every woman when they're born, basically, is predisposed to getting bone disease at a certain age. 
their lifestyle will determine what age that be, whether you end up prolonging that or you bring it forward. Most people's lifestyles is bring it forward. That's why so many people are getting bone disease at such young ages these days compared to before, because the modern lifestyle is absolutely horrendous, okay? So you need to do it for your bones for that reason. Weight-bearing activity, so resistance training, weight training, whatever you want to call it, all the same thing really, okay? But you need to do weight training for that reason. Everybody, men or women, need to do weight training because it's the only way you can tone your body. Everyone wants to be tight and toned. No one wants to be just slim and flabby, for instance. You want to have tight, you know, body being tight. Doesn't mean you have to look like a magazine cover, but you want your body to be tight to some degree, okay? The only way that can happen is through doing resistance training. Because if you don't do resistance training, your muscle is soft and saggy. It's just a lot of people who think they have a load of fat in their body and they're really soft, not actually soft at all not actually that much fat in their body. It's loose muscle. Because when you don't do any form of resistance training, the muscle becomes soft and saggy and feels like fat, but it's not fat. When you start doing some resistance training, that muscle then will just get smaller, which means your body will get smaller overall. So it's like you're getting slimmer, but that muscle is getting smaller and tighter and then harder. So, you know, this is where the kind of tone comes in, the body feeling tighter, body feeling harder. Okay, does that make sense? So this is where, again, you know, even if you're not interested in ever being like super, super lean or like a magazine or like a fitness model or anything like that, or like an athlete, you know, you still want to get tighter. Everyone wants to get tighter. Like it doesn't matter if someone's 30 stone or someone's like already like seven or eight percent body fat. We're all trying to lose fat, gain muscle. That's the goal. You notice I didn't say the word weight. Wipe out the word weight. Lose fat. Get fat off your body and gain lean muscle on your body. OK, so we all need to gain lean muscle because it's important for our bodies again tightness aesthetics how we look how we feel about ourselves confidence self-esteem and so on also from the age of 25 on your metabs or you're starting to lose muscle mass okay so you just something just happens this when people blame age it's not age is the problem it's where your lifestyle is in conjunction with your age because from 25 on that is just what happens your muscle mass starts to decrease you lose muscle mass it dis it disimproves your body shape it's it just improves the tightness, the hardness you maybe had. It's decreasing your posture. It's also decreasing your metabolism because muscle burns a lot of calories and burns calories 24-7, okay? This, this is why muscle is so important, no matter whether you're male, female, whether you want to be massive like a bodybuilder or you want to be, want to be slim like a long-distance runner. Muscle mass, is just, you're still getting muscle mass in your body. If you look at long-distance runners, they're very, very thin and slight, but they're muscular in that they have muscle, the bone muscle and tiny bit of fat. So we all want to gain muscle, like I said. So we're losing muscle from 25 on. So that affects our posture, our body shape, and most important, your metabolism. If you're burning less calories because you've just lost some calorie burning uh, fuel, it's going to make it harder for you to keep your body shape. Okay. So by maintaining muscle mass or even adding muscle mass as you go through your life from 25 on, you're keeping your metabolism at a high level, okay? All your metabolism drops from 25 on naturally. Again, it drops down. We have to counteract it. We have to counteract it with exercise. We have to counteract it then with the way we're eating as well, the types of foods we're eating, okay? So the middle-aged spread thing is all a big myth. It's like a, it's like a get-out clause. Oh, it's just normal middle-aged. I've hit 40s, hit 50s. It just happens. No, it doesn't just happen. You allowed it to happen because you, you have lived a lifestyle for a couple of decades which does not serve the purpose of having, you know, a lean body, you know, a slim body, a body with like decent fat levels and decent muscle levels. You have not lived a life to serve that. You've lived a life where you've eaten way too much, you've moved way too little. So your calories in are way more than your calories out. So of course you're going to add more fat because that's a simple equation. If you're consuming more calories and you're burning, well, they have to go somewhere. So they will store as fat. Okay, makes sense? Again, it's very basic. Like that's at a very basic, there's obviously a bit more complication to it, but that's the basic level of what goes on. So we need to counteract the, the natural biological element of our metabolism dropping from 25 on, both in terms of metabolism naturally dropping itself and also your muscle mass dropping. Okay, so really, really important. This is why everyone needs to do resistance training. It does not matter what you're, whether you want muscle or not. You know, whether you want to build muscle or not, you need to do it even just for maintenance purposes, even just for health, posture, you know, preventing fat gain, all that kind of stuff. Okay, does that make sense? Cardio. Am I better to go for a two-hour run? Am I better to do like a five, ten-minute sprint session? 
you're better doing the five, 10 minute sprint session. Now that'd be good news for you in terms of the duration because people don't like exercise in long term, long time, but people hate intensity. So people don't typically work hard. They don't like working hard, but it's like everything in life. The more effort you put into, into something, the more you get back. And it's great that you can do short little workouts and they're far more impactful than workouts that are hours and hours longer. If you do a two hour walk, for instance, and another version of you, there's a 10, 15 minute hit session. Now hit, in case you're not aware of what it is, is high intensity interval training, okay? So what that means is you've got little bursts. You've got intense bursts of activity, whatever it may be. It could be running, cycling, rowing, punching a bag, cross trainer, star jumps, burpees. It doesn't matter. Intense exercise, okay? So bursts of intense exercise followed by a recovery phase of active rest. So jogging the spot or going easier on whatever mode of exercise you're choosing to use, okay? So you're up and down like that for 10, 15 minutes. And also when you go hard, it's meant to be absolutely full on. You're meant to give it everything you can because otherwise you're not getting stimulation. Now that kicks ass after two hour walk or jog if someone is at level of fitness. Whatever medium level of exercise is what I'm comparing to. If you've got intense, super intense but short, you've got very low to medium intensity but long. This one is so much more superior from a calorie burning, burning point of view. And if your goal is metabolism and your goal is to burn fat and get lean muscle and so on, the short intense workout is so superior, like so superior, because it's not just about the calories you burn during the workout. People focus so much on that. It's like when they look at their watches for what calories are burned, or they're on a machine in the gym, like a treadmill or something, it says how many calories are burnt at the end of the workout. Like they're only estimations. The one, the watch is going to be a bit more accurate because it's literally tied into the way your body is working. The machine's just going off a base calculation of height and weight and stuff like that. And it does no weight about your own personal metabolism because we're all different in terms of our metabolism and our lifestyle and everything. So the calories you burn during the workout, that's that amount, small amount, never eating dramatic. It'll be small, of course, if it's hit training for only 15 minutes versus doing an hour or two. However, what's important is what you burned a few hours after the workout. So post-workout metabolism, metabolic effect is what matters. When you do low, low to medium intensity exercise, metabolic effect post-workout, nearly it's nearly zero it'll be minimal maybe half an hour an hour after a little bit extra burning but that's kind of it and it depends so much on what you eat and when you eat after as well following hit training your metabolism is elevated to a very high level for many hours afterwards many many hours after and also they like, think about like a graph it's gone way up eating increase your metabolism so if you eat then an hour hour and a half later or something that kicks it back up again if it's dropped a bit and then you know, again, if you keep eating, it's keeping it up. So you basically, it's like giving your metabolism a leg up by doing a hit session. This is why I'm, I always recommend to people doing even five, 10 minutes of a quick, intense workout first thing in the morning because your metabolism is really slow when you wake up in the morning because you've been asleep all morning. You do a quick little workout. One, it wakes you up for sure because we all feel a bit tired and sleepy and lethargic when we get out of bed. It stimulates your mind. So again, your mind's more alert after exercise. That's why one of the massive benefits of exercising. And another one, then your metabolism is stimulated. And then throughout the day, by having a good, healthy eating nutrition plan, you will keep that metabolism at a much higher level than if you didn't do that workout. Does that make sense? Because eating is good for your metabolism. Eating burns calories. Eating creates a situation where you would burn way more fat than not eating. This is where when people go on like starvation diets and deprive themselves of food and eat very little in a day, thinking they lose loads of fat, that's only a myth. That will not happen. You will actually kill your metabolism. And when you kill the metabolism, it's so easy to gain fat and it's uh, so hard to lose fat and it's so hard to get in shape. So make sure you're doing HIIT training. If that's your goal, if your goal is fitness, to increase your fitness specifically, if it's your goal is to lose fat specifically or to gain muscle, because cardio can help gain muscle too, like doing things like hill sprints, or row machine, or punch bag, or heavy resistance on a like a treadmill or a cross trainer or a bike or anything like that. So we'll help to build muscle. It's like doing resistance training in a form of cardio. So focus instead on intense exercise. Now, if you're an endurance athlete like the way I am, like I do triathlon, so you know I need to do long duration. Like I can't be at a fitness level I need I need to be at if I'm just doing hit training all the time. But I do a mix because I need to increase my anaerobic threshold, which HIIT training does, and I need to increase my aerobic threshold, which is what low to medium intensity exercise does. Okay? So 
don't rely on steady state, low intensity exercise. Don't expect it to change your body. Now, if you're starting out and you have an exercise in the years, it will have an impact, but only to a point. If you're 30 stone, 20 stone even, and you start out doing steady state stuff, it will have an impact to a point. But when you get to that point where you're in not too bad shape, your body will only react into HIIT training. Okay. And like I said, it's short. That's the great thing about it. It's short. So you don't have to go, you don't have to give up much of your time. It'll easily fit into the busy lifestyles that most people have these days. Like most people have very, very busy lifestyles around the go all the time, a lot of stress, you know, constant demands on their life. But to do to do this keeps growing and growing. Then if you've got like family and kids and pets and everything, it's more demand. So, you know, we live in a world now where it's quite hard to prioritize yourself, but you should always prioritize yourself because you are the most important person in your life to make sure that you are doing that. And fitting in a 5, 10, or 15, or 20-minute interval session a few times a week shouldn't be that hard, okay? So that's that side. Now, which is better, weights or cardio, if you want to lose fat? That's the next minute one to us. It's actually weights. That will probably surprise you, because everyone always thinks of cardio when they think of losing fat or losing weight. I hate using the word weight, but I know you might be able to relate it more, because that's what people talk about all the time. But what we want to lose is fat, not weight. I can cut off your arm and cut off your leg. You will lose weight. But that ain't going to make you look any better, is it? But you want to lose fat. You want to lose fat. You want to gain muscle. Get that into your head. That's why weighing yourself is an absolute disaster. Anyway, cardio versus weight. Why is weight better? Well, weights are better because the overall metabolic effect is 24-7. Even when you're asleep, you're burning calories. So if, if, for instance, if it was two of me, exact same person, exact same everything, working the same way. And I did four hit sessions a week, 20 minutes on a particular nutrition plan for 12 weeks. And the other version of me did four 20, 30 minute uh, proper effective weight sessions, only resistance training, and the same nutrition plan as the other guy for 12 weeks. I, on the resistance training, will absolutely kick the other guy's ass. Why? Because cardio training will have an impact on your metabolism in terms of your burn calories. It'll burn a bit of calories after, depending on what kind of training you do. Hit training a bit more, as I said, fitness level will increase as well, which your basal metabolic rate, which is your standard level on a daily basis, that will elevate as well, but that will be it. Whereas if resist- resistance training, you burn a fair amount of calories during it, you burn a lot of glycogen during it, you go into st- fat stores a lot easier during weight training. Also for 24 hours, seven days a week, your body is repairing itself because you're ripping the shit out of your muscle fibers in the workout, then the body goes to work repairing it via you know, your your intake of food and nutrients and your sleep so it's a 24 7 process you're burning calories all the time and like that it's like you're adding muscle or calorie burning um vehicles to your body when you add lean muscle and it improves your posture it makes you look better like lean muscle looks good versus someone who might be slim but and not a huge amount of fat but kind of loose you know because if you don't have muscle in your body you know your your fat is kind of saggy even if there isn't that much there and, you know, if there's not much muscle there, the body doesn't look kind of toned. And it's toned that everyone's after at the end of the day. You know, while everyone talks about fat and weight, people want to be toned. And like I said, it's all to your own personal level. Not everyone wants to look like a professional athlete or a magazine cover or a fitness model. You know, what is your level? Work at your own level. Because that's all that actually matters. Okay. So if you compare weights to cardio, weights are so much superior. When I say weights, no, I mean resistance training as well. And that can be anything. It doesn't have to be, again, in the gym. It can be just using a barbell at home. It can be, you know, in the park. It can be using a box, using a chair, using bottles, you know, using just your body weight, doing calisthenic type stuff, bands. Like, it's about the effort you put in. It's all about effort. Everything's about effort, okay? So, you know, steady or cardio versus, versus weight, there's really no comparison between the two. Weight destroys steady, say, cardio from a, or HIIT training even from a fat burning and metabolism point of view. So that's really important. Now, let me clarify. I'm not telling you to do just weights. I'm telling you if you did just weights versus someone doing just cardio, you will destroy them results wise. But if you want to get the best results and the fastest results, do a mix of both. So in every routine, there should be a combination of resistance training and um, cardiovascular training. However many days a week you're doing them, there should be a mix of them within that, okay? That is so important and makes such, such a difference. I want to stress to you the key principles of getting in shape through resistance training or any kind of training, you know, it's cardiovascular as well. There's three things you need to focus on and their intensity, which is work hard, like I've touched on already. You need to focus on working hard, intense, 
short bursts, go as hard as you can. So different than doing a set on any particular weights exercise. You know, you should be going right to your match, right to your failures. You can't do another rep, or if you do, it's assisted by someone else. So someone gives you like a little hand. They might do 10, 20% of it, you're doing the rest. And you couldn't complete the rep otherwise without their assistance. So you should be going absolutely intense, just like we do in cardio. If you're doing hit training, the burst should be absolutely full on as hard as you possibly can, okay? Progression, always aim to do more. Once you do something, once the body can do it, it adjusts and it can do more. Now, like I said, there's different times, different situations, like if there's stuff in your mind, you know, you're tired, you're feeling a bit ill, your energy is really low, you've had poor sleep, you know, you're going through various traumas or issues, and it's a case of just going through the workout, just getting it done. Your workout said it's not about progressing, you may even do much less than you normally would. But all things being equal, you should be able to progress pretty much every workout, even if it's only by a little bit, it could be by one rep, it could be by one kilo, it could be a bit of both. It could be a bit of extra speed, duration, whatever it may be. But once you do something once, the body adapt, adapt, uh, adjusts and adapts to it. Once your sleep and your nutrition are feeding the body right so it can repair it adequately, and then you'll be able to do more. So you can always do more. That's why there's no limit. We have no limits. We literally can continuously improve all the time. Now, the level of improvement will, of course, get smaller and smaller. Otherwise, we'd be running at insane speeds and we'd be lifting just buildings okay but you can continuously improve okay so this is something that's really important but it will only happen if you apply intensity so you've intensity you've got progression where you're aiming to do more every single workout or most workouts then you got muscle confusion which is really important so muscle confusion just basically means that you don't keep doing the same thing over and over again so the big thing that happens to people especially inside in gyms or with many trainers unfortunately is that you know people are given routines and do the same routine all the time they never change it okay and that's bad trainers, as well as, you know, gyms with bad service. And also, again, online, even workouts and online services and systems that just are just lazy. Your body needs to change. Your body needs adjustments. Your body needs something to challenge it, some new challenges. Your brain does, too. If you're doing the same thing all the time, you'll get bored. It's important for you to not get bored as well. So change up your routines on a regular basis. Like, I often change routines with some clients every single workout. Other people might be every single week, others every two weeks, three weeks. I would rarely go beyond three weeks for anyone on a workout. Only reason typically would be is if they were struggling with particular exercise techniques or if they just hadn't done what they were supposed to do for those few weeks, and then there's no point in changing. But if you've stuck to your plan, stuck to your routine, done the number of days you were meant to do, you should change your routine regularly, okay? And that applies for everything. And like I said, for your brain as well. It's not just about simulating your metabolism and muscle growth and so on, which it will do, because again, it's a new challenge for your body. But even for just for your brain and your mind, just a new challenge again is great in terms of just stimulating. Them. So, you know, it makes it more interesting for you. Because if you're doing the same thing all the time, the body just gets bored, the mind gets bored, you're not going to progress. You're just going to go through the motions. Okay. I hope that makes sense. Another big myth out there is about quantity. People focus on quantity so much. Not about quantity, it's about quality. And I've touched on it a little bit in terms of with the hit training. You can do hours and hours and hours and hours of exercise, even say four hours of exercise a day, six, seven days a week for an entire year. And at the end of the year, have barely any change in your body. You might be a bit fitter, a bit stronger, but you won't have any change in your body shape. You might think, what the hell? The reason, again, is it's not about quantity, it's about quality. I said about intensity being so important, just like progression and muscle confusion. So it's not about the quantity, it's about the quality. And this is a good thing, again, for people's busy lifestyles. You don't have to be exercising a lot. You don't have to be doing loads. You don't have to be putting much time into it. You just have to make sure you give it welly. You just have to make sure you give it what you've got. Give it the best you can when you're doing it. Be present in your workout. You know, really focus. Really tune into how much more you can give and give it absolutely everything. So quality is what matters. Okay, because so many people get bought up in the, or caught up in the quantities. Now. So to go out for hours and hours, they go to the gym for hours and hours. They go do loads of classes. Like even when I first started out with 17 in the whole fitness world, like I used to do an aerobics class for an hour, maybe even two aerobics classes. That was two hours. Then there was a circuit training class that was on for an hour. Then I go to the gym for an hour in terms of doing weight training and stuff like that. I often, I either spend three or four hours, five days a week minimum, sometimes six. And while I felt great in terms of I was exercising, it made me feel good. Mentally, I felt good. It improved my confidence, self-esteem, my motions, all that kind of stuff. It did me wonders. I did have some physical change. I did have improved fitness, improved strength, self-esteem, all these things. But I had nowhere near the level of 
uh, transformation I would have expected for that amount, that volume, that quantity of exercise that I was doing. So that's what got me into researching things and thinking about things and looking into things and speaking to proper experts and hiring mentors and all this kind of stuff. So I would learn the facts about exercise because at the end of the day, time is precious. It's our most valuable resource. I don't want to be wasting time. I don't want to be wasting my time if I'm not going to get the benefit from it. I prefer to be doing other things if I can with that time instead of wasting it doing exercise. And I want to get the results as fast as I can. That's why when I say to you, what I say, what I teach you is going to work, I know it will work 100% because I know from personal experience, I know from thousands of clients around the world that whatever I tell you to do will work. You just have to follow it. But, you know, I used to do that. And that's what led me to start decreasing my workouts, increasing intensity, increasing progression, increasing muscle confusion, all these kind of things. The more I learned, and then I started to see it happen in real life. And this is the thing that matters. Real life experience what matters, not just theoretical. Like I've got tons and tons of qualifications. I put very little weight on my knowledge and my abilities, my expertise on those courses. I put it mainly on my own experience in life, my experience with so many different types of people all over the world, different demographics and backgrounds and genetics and everything. My own challenges in different types of disciplines, whether it be bodybuilding or <clears throat> when I was focusing more on lean, getting lean type training, like athletic or fitness type training, 10Ks, marathons, triathlons, Ironmans now. You know, I base everything on that and work with people with different kinds of goals. That's what teaches you what really works. And it's all this quality. No matter who it is, what the goal is, quality is what matters. Even for endurance athletes, you know, if an endurance athlete focuses on quality, it's going to be much better than just quantity. Like, of course, endurance needs quantity. But if you match quantity with quality, you're going to get even better results. Whereas there's a lot of endurance athletes who do the same training, same volume, huge volumes, like huge quantities, Week in, week out, but does their overall ability improve? Most of the time not. Usually have the same ability, same speed, same times, same finishing times, no real improvement. You have to have quality with the quantity if you do endurance, okay? Does that make sense? So quality always over quantity. It applies to absolutely everything in life anyway. So always focus on quality over quantity in life, okay? So I hope this little uh, episode focusing on myths versus facts in the exercise world has helped you. I hope it's cleared up a few things for you. I hope it's made sense to you. Some things might be reminders. Some things might have shocked you. Some things might be completely new to you and they made sense. I hope they made sense. If anything didn't make sense to you or you have a question about it or you actually question its validity, make sure you get in contact with me. I would love to discuss it with you. I would love to. And I would love to answer your questions. I always welcome questions just like I always welcome feedback because it's important to get feedback so I know whether these this podcast is giving you value or not giving you value and what you want. You know, the Mind Body Health podcast, just like all that I do, is for you and it's for your benefit. So I need you to tell me what you need. Okay. So I hope you enjoyed this episode of the Mind Body Health podcast. Please leave a rating and review on Apple iTunes as well as I think Spotify does it now. And if there's any other podcasting platforms that does ratings and reviews, please add them. And if you watch this on YouTube, make sure you leave, uh, give it a like and leave a comment. And please, most importantly, share details of this podcast out there far and wide so other people can tune in and hopefully benefit from it. Remember, I can only, you know, I can only reach out to a certain number of people myself. You can help me to reach more people. Remember, my goal every single morning I open my eyes is to have a positive impact on even just one person. So that is the way I live my life. And if you can help me to have a positive impact on more people or that one person that day, I would be eternally grateful. And again, for you, that's a great thing too, that you can be satisfied with you played a role in giving that person that spark they needed. And now more than ever, people need sparks. People need the sparks because we're living in very tough times in recent years and it will continue, there's no doubt. And it's important for us to get strong minds, to take care of our bodies, take care of our health, prioritize the whole mind body health area of our life and, you know, work towards happiness, which is all life should be about anyway. And I do hope that the Mind Body Health podcast in some little way helps you and helps others to you know, get the right mindset to work towards happiness, to make better choices for yourself, to prioritize you and your well-being and to be the fittest, healthiest, most energetic version of yourself because that's what I want for you. All right, so this, that's it for the Mind Body Head podcast for this particular episode. Signing off now, Dave Sheen here and uh, always here to serve you in any way I can. Keep taking action towards evolving into the best version of you and living your best life.